Joining us is Jim Cuddy for the first time. Welcome to Country Party. So excited to have you. Thank you very much. I saw you in passing briefly at the CMAOs in Ottawa. Very busy at the after party. I love the CMAOs. I'm very excited that this year they're still trying to push through with it and have it in London. Congratulations, you're nominated for Male Artist of the Year. You must be super excited to be able to do some performances this year. I actually did a few in Niagara at a winery called Redstone. They were outdoor, of course. Um, 100 people, 25 tables of four, and it was such a relief to play again. And of course, different, you know, people can't get up, they can't dance or anything, but it was at least some semblance of of normality and it was really really enjoyable. I think everybody's going to take advantage of the nice weather and put on as many of these as possible because I don't know what we're going to do when we have to move indoors or maybe it's outdoors for the winter too. We are a hearty people you know. True. So we can probably do it. Peters and Coates. <laughs> we're Canadian after all. That's right. You've got a brand new song that was really good news. What was it that was the trigger that led you to this song? We have a little country place north of Toronto and that's where I've been since March. And I've been writing a lot of music, and I think that obviously I've been paying attention to everything that's going on. I've been feeling the effects of the isolation. And then when I started watching all the peaceful protests and the way that people were coming together in a united message, I just felt like these were difficult times, but that we had this ability to unite and do something really positive as long as there was some hope ahead of us, as long as there was some good news and we could keep going and keep going and, and do the right thing. I was just moved by all the images that I saw. What is it during these past couple of months do you feel has put you in a little bit of a slump? And then what was it that gave you a boost of positivity? I'm lucky enough to be where I am in my life. You know, my kids have grown up and I'm pretty sheltered from the real harsh realities of the isolation. I think this government did a lot of good helping people get through it. Mm -hmm. I think that what was moving for me was just carrying on blithely up there and then just watching the acts of kindness. An email chain that was up at our place where people said, look, if anybody needs anything, let's talk to each other. And if I go to the store, I'll get you something. If you go, you get me something. Those acts of kindness that didn't exist before, they were always in us, but we didn't need them before. And so the way that people reached out to each other was, was really moving. And I didn't know what to do with it until I saw the Black Lives Matters protests. And that gave me a focus and I knew what to do. Absolutely. Coming out of this, we were going to have hopefully a little bit more of a positive and appreciation for life in general, but also with artists creating songs like these, it's something that we'll always have to look back on and music lives forever. So it's really nice that artists are able to put feelings and stuff like this that the rest of us may not be able to articulate as well into something very meaningful that a lot of people will be able to relate to and connect with. I, listen, I think that's really well put. <laughs> I think that these are very strange times we're going through and we go through it because we have the strength to go through it and the will to go through it. But when we look back, we'll realize just how unusual it was that we were all trapped in our houses for a long time and in the midst of it, there was an uprising, a North American if not global uprising about the way that black people have been treated in our countries and certainly glad to be one of the contributors. My wife is an actor and so everybody has been putting pieces of art out there and you realize from the connectivity through even virtual connectivity how much it matters to everybody to just see it as a symbol, see it as a song, see it as a piece of theater, it matters. Absolutely. And something that I toy around with is social media. Does it do more harm than good? And in this case, absolutely, we're able to bring awareness left, right, and center, but also it's able to help us mentally with these connections. Can you imagine if this pandemic happened 10, 20 years ago? It would have been so different. We would be on dial-up internet, one person on the phone at, at a time. We just have to be grateful for those types of things. I agree. Safe. I think also... We would have adapted somehow. Mm -hmm. we, I mean, it's the same way we adapted now. I think if you had told us in January that we were going to be locked down from March until sometime in the middle of the summer, we would have thought that was impossible. We would not have felt that we could do it. Mm -hmm. But somehow, I think it's so admirable, like just even in my world, my music world and my family world, we understand what we need. We need to communicate with each other. We need to send ideas and things back and forth. We just simply find a way. So it's sort of remarkable to see how resourceful we all are. Yeah, for sure. During this time, what has, you know, the day in the life of Jim Cuddy been like? <laughs> <laughs> for a long time, it was pretty boring, although not to me. Because one of the great things about it was, generally, I may have a couple of days at home, and then I would be going to the airport, flying somewhere, doing a gig. Now, every day, I would wake up in the same place. 
and there would be a guitar, and I would play it for a little while, and then I would do some exercise and look around and play it for a while. So I had a very productive time. And also, I had to learn how to do a lot of things that I didn't know how to do. Things that broke in our little country house, I had to figure it out because nobody's coming over. <laughs> <laughs> we have bad storms up there and tree branches are down. Yeah. Well, you better figure out how to get rid of them. I learned a lot about communicating virtually. You know, I, I had some understanding of it, of course. I right. participated in it for 10 years, but I didn't really learn about live streaming and what was the best way to do it. And so I learned a lot of computer skills that I didn't have before. Now all these millennials can't hold that over my head anymore, <laughs> which is great. But yeah, I mean, the days went by. Sorry to make this such a long answer, but in a way... The repetitiveness of the days was a blessing to me. Mm -hmm. I've never had that. I haven't had that in 35 years. So it was nice. I refer to it as Groundhog Day. We're in right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I enjoy Groundhog Day. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Yeah, because generally you're, you know, on tour doing all these shows. At what point did you got the idea that it's going to be canceled? It was pretty gradual. I mm -hmm. think that when we locked down in March, we still felt that we would lose the spring, but our summer shows would still be a go. In Toronto, we lived through SARS, and we understood the toll it took and how much time it took. So this was much different, and as the summer went away, and then everything went away. You know, it wasn't that they went away, they were all postponed. Next year yeah. would be the busiest year of my life, <laughs> because everything's just been put off till next year. And also, you know what? I was packed and ready to go to the Juno. My car was waiting. Everything happened somewhat abruptly, but also gradually. It wasn't, I think, until May that we realized that it was all going to be a long time and we better start figuring out some other plans. You seem to be very positive. You've got a great outlook on things. You've been doing some writing. And I want to say, keep up this momentum. I wish you all the best with good news. I love the title of that song because that's something that we're not really getting too much of these days. So we've got to no. take it as it comes. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate it.